Welcome back guys, so we're back on tuning on the diner. So I've got this little polo here, running a Simos 18 ECU, and I'm gonna go through the tuning of it. Let's go. So this car's got some tune on it already, which we kind of don't know what it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the car back to stock to give us a kind of like a bit of better understanding of where we are and then we'll start tuning it. So the tool I'm gonna to be used is uh, B flash. So I'll use B flash for this because this one uh, flashes it and data logs it, which saves me a bit of time swapping leads and stuff. So let's get it put back to stock and then we'll start. I'll, put it onto my laptop and we'll have a look. Right then, cool. So I put the Polo back to stock to give it a run as it is. Make sure it starts. It's a good sign. So car started, ESP off, so I'm on the dyno. I want to data log this car. So first thing I'm going to go is just connect to car and then I'm just going to select. I'm just going to go with the generic login profiles to start with, which covers pretty much everything. You've got uh, a high pressure fuel pump, uh, wastegate boost, boost specified actual RPM, throttle position, torque. So it's going to set the car up on the dyno as usual. Turbo, manual, no slip, front wheel drive. I'm just going to see how far off I am. 40 kilometers, 60 kilometers an hour and four. EPC light has already flashed. So we've already got an EPC light, which is a good start. And I'll just cruise it along. I wonder why it dropped then. So what I'm going to do is just disconnect and see what we've got. So we've got a few sensors there. Obviously speed sensors we're going to have because the, the back's not running to the front. And the rest I'm not too bothered about. So I'm just going to clear those off a minute. For some reason I have the EPC light on, so it's a bit weird how it's come on, but I've got no code for that. So here we go. So obviously our job is 90, probably our 90% of diagnostics. So connect. Reconnect and then start logger. We've got two versions. I always go for the V3.3. You can type in here all the more information if you want. So the logger's now logging. Fourth gear and send it. Now we've got a bit of, of an SCF there, which is it's kind of seen a bit of noise in the cylinders for not. Might not necessarily be knocked, but it's seen some noise and the throttle is quite 80%. It's quite good on the throttle. That's actually probably one of the best stock Simos 18 throttles that you get. They're normally quite, on the, on the gold bars and that, they're quite messy. Math value target. Can't see because I've got this thing in the way. So we're running up. Uh, about 11, about just over a thousand. The map is a model value, as you can see here. It's not a physical read one because these cars don't have a map. It's, it's like a calculated thing. And then we've got the intake temp. It's running at 46, 47. And that's not great at all at this level. So th this is kind of where we kind of build the stages. We're kind of looking at what the weakest link is at different parts of the tuning to see what will be you know, what, what do you have to buy to do the next stage? So obviously stage two, I would recommend, even at stage one, I'd probably recommend an intercooler because it's already running quite warm. I mean, the room is only 14 degrees and I'm hitting 47. So that's not ideal. So all in all, it looks it looks pretty good. There's a bit of ignition pull, but everything else seems to be pretty much job on. This is run quite lean, but it's all following as it should. So what you're pretty much looking for at this stage is is when something can't quite match the specified. So if my boost wasn't matching specified, or my wastegate was all over the place, or anything like that, or there's excessive knock on any of the cylinders, but I'm not really seeing much of that. So this will be okay to start tuning. So I'm going to load the file now into Winnells, so we can begin. So Winnells is going to look for a, a, a one I've already done. I know I've already got this version. I think Polos are pretty much to them all. Yep. So. I've already got a version and it's a full map pack so anything blue says that there's maps there so open a version up I've got already obviously done a few of these stage one checking out what boost I'm going to be running so 1.6 bar 1.5 bar red line I'm probably going to drop that down at this point just to see 
what this car can actually do because I'm having a bit of a weird one on the wastegate. Okay. So good to start with that one. So I'm going to call it stage one. So here we go. Get my B flash logger up. I prefer to have that on the screen. I can always look up and see the, the dyno screen. One of the benefits of using a dyno is you can watch it while you're in it. With, on the road, you're kind of looking back at it after. So, fourth gear, flat out, touch loose. Right, even though the graph looks good, you can hear it coming in and out of the, the uh, wastegate. Decent gains. Graph looks good. Obviously, I didn't rev it as far. Let's have a look what we've got now. Hear that wastegate. I'm going to see if the logs match what I can hear. I'm guessing it probably will. So, we're going to go to the wastegate. Yeah. So, see how you got that wave? What that basically means is I need to do a bit of work on the wastegate to get that to work. Because these work on a block of pre-gate, so it's kind of like it targets something and if it doesn't work, it works on the pin to drag it back and it'll go again, drag back, go again, drag back, go again, drag back, which is pretty much what's happening there. So the boost itself probably doesn't look too bad. Yeah, same again, look. See how the boost is waving? So the boost is waving with the wastegate's waving. So the wastegate's opening and closing, so does the boost. You, can't, you can kind of feel it as it's going through the run. So, this is where I'm going to put my attention into fixing this. So, the wastegate tables. Am I still on it? Should be still on it? Yep. So, the wastegate tables are here. I'll just show you. Go to the boost. So, these are the boost tables. And your wastegate tables are here. So, these two here. So these are basically set up wrong. Now you're only really going to use, the, the biggest problem with these is they run, the axis data isn't a physical axis data, it's like another model data. So it's like exhaust pressure and all that kind of stuff goes into these axis data. So it doesn't really help. And in the middle it's factored, so 0.66, 66% and all that kind of stuff. So you can go two ways on this. I can either give it more or give it less to try and get it to stabilise. Uh, this is all over the shop. Now remember stock, it was actually okay. It wasn't too far too far gone. So you can either drop the boost, mess with the PID, or adjust it in the wastegate itself. So I'll do a test. Say if I... Uh, you're only really going to be using about four rows down. Any more than that you don't really need. So what we'll do is I'll actually raise it. Just as a test to see what it does. Will it over target or will it under target? So it's from 6.5, 1.9. I'll just bring that into both. So I'm going to add more just to see how it behaves. Quick flash cards, you can mess around with them. Leave everything else as it is because you don't want to, when you're looking to fix stuff, don't try and change too much stuff because you kind of have to go back. So we're version 2 that, and we'll flash it on. Sounded good. So what we've got now. It sounded a lot better. I didn't really hear that whoosh, whoosh, that whooshy noise. There's a wastegate that's going in and out. So, wastegate. A lot better. You, like, you always get a bit of noise, but there's not a really lot lot going on there so it's pretty much got that and we're at the same power so the boost is saying so there's still a little bit there on the boost but not enough to hear it which is obviously what we was getting before so it's been reduced quite a lot so it does look like it just didn't have enough to play with with the wastegate so it's causing that horrible wishy sound because it was having a bit of a spaz on the stock settings. Because obviously when, they, when they're when they setting these cars up in the factory, they're not really looking to, to kind of push to these boost levels. So a lot of these, a lot of the times, when you start to push into the boost levels, you, you've got to do quite a bit of setting up because the car isn't set up already to do those boost levels. I still say it needs a little bit more just to smooth that out. But we're going in the right direction because that's a lot better than what it was before. And I actually can't physically hear that 
that washing. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. Go 0.82, I'm going to go 0.85. You can smooth it in if you want. Because obviously it was smoothed in before. But if you want to use that just to smooth it in a little bit, you can. So I'm just going to copy that and put it into the second. Once you get to this point, to the point where it actually works, you should be able to raise the boost and mess around with it as, as you like. Doing. So what we're basically doing, the, the turbo has got a wastegate, it's like an electronic wastegate which is attached to a, like a little flap inside the turbo and that regulates the boost. So what we're trying to do is try and keep that, that regulation nice and steady so we're not getting that horrible washing sound until the boost is on, on and off because that flap will be going like that inside the turbo. So that's what we kind of want to, they've broke something, that's what we kind of want to avoid and give the, let, let the ECU have a bit of control over what it's doing without opening and shutting that throttle. So a lot better. Just seems like it's like a little bit weak it's still. It's a tad wavy but we don't feel it. Like we did before. It's still running this pretty much the same HP. Okay. So we've got control over this. Now the beauty is when you're setting these up is that the map is pretty much set now to deal with anything I throw at you. Now I've got a front wheel drive car, so what I kind of don't want to be doing really is slamming too much boosting down low to kind of cock up the way that the car comes on to boost. So I kind of want to bring that in a little bit later. Now we've got access deck up here which we can use. Now the rest of the map is set up so I can set up this to whatever I want. So I can use this if you like as a bit of a boost target table. So I can come on a little bit earlier. So it's a 2.2 bar down there and then 2.3. I kind of don't want to, but what I want to do is all is change the axe around a bit to give me more control in this in places that I want control. So 2.4 will be fine there. I'm going to come through 200 there and I'm going to go to 2.5 and then I'm going to start tapering it off 2.4. Might even go a little bit lower here. So you get a bit more of a, a, a torque in the middle rather than trying to slam it in and just spin the wheels all the time. So we'll give it a go with this to see, what, see how she likes it. Try and start messing with the torque because it's with the front wheel drive cars you, you don't really want to slam it in because yeah it, it's all right for a couple of runs like you know it's funny you get the wheels spinning and things like that but it doesn't really make it a fast car and you end up killing clutches. Like, this is a manual so it's a case of messing around with this now to, to kind of get it to near. I've got the wastegate somewhere near. There's, there could be a bit of fine tuning there. But it's it's okay to start messing around with the tune a little bit. Try and get it to be a little bit faster on the road. I've tapered the boost off a little bit. It is a manual. With the DSGs, you kind of don't want to overspin the turbo too much as it comes in. Because it changes the gear that fast. It kind of clumps. I've noticed a few, a few turbo failures due to holding it out at like 1.6, 1.7 bar on the IS38, which isn't very ideal. You kind of want to be taping that off. <coughs> and also help the heat, because you're not really going to be doing a lot of power up that, that end with that kind of boost. So the less you're targeting, the less heat you're making, the more time you can add in and make the power up that way instead. There's lots of different ways to tune in an engine. 2.7, 4.15. Right, let's have a look what she's doing. Disconnect. Oh, I didn't need to disconnect then, but I'm there now. So I did feel the waste get in and out again, as, as I expected. So let's go. Yeah, it's right in the middle. I'm hitting two point uh, one point five bar. So I've, so I've changed the boost level in the middle there, and it didn't like it. Let's have a look. Yeah, look. So come on boost well and it has a spaz. So this is gonna need some fettling with the, the pit control to try and get it to act a lot better. Now the easiest way to set these up is actually on the road because with a dyno it's the load's very different and you can start you can well I've done it before I've spent quite a quite a while refining the tune on the dyno to get it somewhere near to go on the road is completely different. So I always find things like this always better to do out on the road. 
So that is what we'll do. So my next video, I want to be focusing on road tuning. So we're going to take this car on the road and we're going to see if this matches what we get on the dyno and then we're going to fix it and sort it out. So I'll bang on that 1.4 tune on now to say she's got something to go home on and then we'll get this out on the road for another version. So that's nearly flashed. So what we're going to do, as I just said, we're going to get this out on the road in episode two. I'm going to show you how to do the PID control. I've never had this before on one of these cars for these ECU, so I do want to go more into it to find out what the, what's going on and fix it so all of later, all the later tunes aren't going to have that problem. It come on, on a tune already which had the same problem, so it might even be hardware related, so we're going to go into that too and I'll show you how you can test all that in the next session. So it's going to be more of a, a diag session. I kind of wanted to see what it was doing in this session just to kind of get a feel for it. Then in the next session we'll sort it out for good and get some uh, some control and some safety in there to try and make sure that it doesn't happen again. As it's not just with this car but with other cars too. That's tuning. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, uh, I can't wait to see you in the next one when we get deep into this car. Now I am away next week. So next week's video is going to be a software based one. I'm going to go through a few softwares with you. And then the week after, we'll dig deep into this car and try and figure it out. Then I'll show you road tuning. So road tuning, very different to dyno tuning. I actually prefer road tuning over dyno tuning, just because it's more natural. And I'll explain why and all that kind of stuff in the next video. That's where I'm going next week. So, yep, still going there next week. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you can, because it really helps my algorithms and all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.